Number 8. Kimberly Proctor On March the 18th of 2010, Canadian teenager Kimberly Proctor arranged to go meet with her two friends, Cruz Wellwood and Cameron Moffat, following a recent breakup with her boyfriend. Earlier in the day, 18-year-old Proctor had been chatting to both Wellwood and Moffat online in different windows. The former asked her to meet so that they could talk about the breakup. She initially brushed it off, but then ended up having a call with him, in which Wellwood secretly involved Moffat as well. The teens, both of whom had digital footprints denoting sadistic and twisted fantasies, started texting each other behind Proctor's back, plotting to lure her to one of their homes. She eventually accepted the invitation, mentioning she would only stay for a short period of time because she had to babysit. After meeting the duo, they headed to Wellwood's home on Happy Valley Road in Langford. Once inside, Proctor was ambushed by the teens, who forced a sock into her mouth and duct taped it before tying her down so that she'd be unable to fight back. They then proceeded to torture and abuse her for hours until she ultimately suffocated to death. Wellwood and Moffat placed her body in a freezer and disposed of it the next day by stuffing it into a hockey bag, taking it under a bridge west of Victoria and burning it. Proctor's mother called the police in the afternoon after failing to get in touch with her, and the teen's body was found later that evening. Her remains were so badly burnt that she could only be identified by her dental records. As the police investigation unfolded, Wellwood reached out to his Halifax girlfriend in the chat of the World of Warcraft online game and shared the details of the murder, which were confirmed by Moffat when he also came into the chat. Wellwood mentioned that he didn't feel bad about what he'd done. The girl reported him to the authorities who used a digital equivalent of 1.4 billion sheets of paper of the two boys' online texts to arrest them. They both pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and indignity of human remains for which they were sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 10 years. Number 7. David Romig Florida woman Sally Kaufman Ruff was found dead with a gunshot wound to her head on January the 30th of 2018 at the Dunellen home she shared with her boyfriend, 52-year-old David Romig. At first, Romig told the authorities he and his girlfriend had been sleeping when someone entered the house and shot the 64-year-old woman following a brief altercation. However, investigators had suspicions about the true sequence of events, which were confirmed by Romig himself when he accidentally texted one of the detectives. In the outgoing messages, he'd expressed concerns about being arrested. Upon being confronted by the authorities, he told the sheriff that it was possible he'd killed his girlfriend while having an out-of-body experience. The DNA test came back from the lab and also confirmed his implication in the murder, prompting law enforcement to question Romig further. They also discovered that he was the only beneficiary of Kaufman Ruff's will and thus set to inherit more than $200,000 in liquid assets. Romig was arrested on the 12th of February after confessing to having shot his girlfriend and staging the crime scene to look like a home invasion. Number 6. Hunter Day In the fall of 2017, the parents of a student at Yukon High School in Yukon, Oklahoma, became concerned that their teenage son was having an inappropriate relationship with one of his teachers. They took the unnamed boy's phone and found explicit text messages to and from 22-year-old chemistry teacher Hunter Day, as well as indecent photographs. The parents called the authorities and made a complaint, asking investigators to conduct a forensic review of their son's cell phone. They discovered evidence that the teacher, who was married to a football coach at the high school, and the teenager were indeed having intimate relations. Investigators also found that Day and the boy had made plans to meet again at the former's home on November the 15th of 2017. Law enforcement used the teen's phone to confirm their date. The teacher replied that she'd be waiting for him with the door unlocked, but instead of her illicit paramour, she was visited by police officers. They found Day sitting on her living room floor with the lights off and candles lit. Following her arrest, she admitted to having a relationship with the teenager. For her crimes, she received two concurrent sentences of 10 years, 
with three years behind bars and seven years of supervised probation. Number five, Sammy Lee Ostolo. A female police officer from the Ocala Police Department in Florida received a series of threatening texts on October the 20th of 2021. One message said, it's Sammy and I will hurt you. Followed by another in which the sender was telling the officer that she was going to beat her up the next day. The number was traced back to 18-year-old Sammy Lee Ostolo. In the investigation that followed, it emerged that the officer had previously arrested the teen's boyfriend for a parole violation. Searches of Ostolo's number on jail phone records also revealed a call originating from the jail to her phone dating back to October the 10th. During the conversation, Ostolo had made threats to beat up the officer and record the process. With enough evidence to incriminate her, detectives from the Marion County Sheriff's Office drove to her residence whereupon they found Ostolo outside on the front yard. She was arrested and only admitted to sending the threatening text messages upon being confronted with the evidence. The teen added that if she could, she'd take the detective's gun and shoot the female officer in the forehead. During the drive to the police station, law enforcement found that Ostolo had managed to remove one of her handcuffs and swallowed the key. After stopping the car, they resecured the teen in her handcuffs and eventually booked her on felony charges of written intimidation and obstruction. Number 4. Samuel Alibor II 58-year-old dump truck driver Samuel Alibor II was on duty driving in the 17200 block of Janito Road in Chesterfield, Virginia on February 13, 2019. At some point, he accidentally veered off road to the right. In an attempt to get his vehicle back on track, he overcorrected his course and plowed into a car driven by 56-year-old Karen Giles. The woman was pronounced dead at the scene and the truck driver was subsequently interviewed by responding police officers. Alibor admitted that he'd been texting behind the wheel but not when he crashed. The man mentioned he'd sent some messages to his girlfriend about the upcoming Valentine's Day, but officers were unable to find them in his phone and asked him if he'd deleted them. When Alibor responded that he could have, police performed a digital scan of the device. They found two deleted text messages which, within the incident's timeline, reveal that the man was texting at the moment of the accident. In court, Alibor apologized to Giles' family and pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter. He was sentenced to nine years in prison with all but eight months suspended as part of a plea agreement. Upon his release, Alibor would have to complete 125 hours of community service related to raising awareness about distracted driving and texting behind the wheel. Number 3. Liz Marks On April the 7th of 2012, high school student Liz Marks was driving her Mazda 3 through St. Michael's, Maryland. The teen didn't notice that a tow truck driver in front of her had stopped to turn left and slammed into his vehicle. The back of the truck went over the Mazda's hood and struck Marks in the head. Because there'd been nothing to engage the Mazda's airbags until the other vehicle made contact with its windshield, they deployed after the impact. Mark suffered critical brain and facial injuries in the accident and was airlifted to the University of Baltimore Shock Trauma Center. The teen survived but remained in the intensive care unit for nearly a month, undergoing facial reconstructive surgeries. She was left blind in one eye and had lost her sense of smell in addition to suffering impaired hearing and the inability to generate tears due to damaged tear ducts. She was also unable to fall asleep naturally in the immediate aftermath. A police investigation found that the tow truck driver, 25-year-old Roy Dixon, had in no way been responsible for the crash as he'd stopped the vehicle legally with its signal turned on. Law enforcement retrieved Marx's cell phone from the floorboards of her car. The teen later admitted that seconds before the crash, she'd looked down to read a message from her mother that only read, OK. Roughly two years after the crash, the teenager and her mother created a video in cooperation with the U.S. Department of Transportation's National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, warning others about the dangers of texting and driving. Today's topic was requested by Instagram follower Miss Diner Artist. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below or follow us on Instagram and reach out to us there. Number 2. Natasha Boggs 24-year-old Natasha R. Boggs 
was driving her 1999 Ford Escort on South Main Street in Coventry Township, Ohio, when she drifted over the fog line on May the 28th of 2017. After losing control of her vehicle, she struck three teenagers, two girls and a boy, who were walking on the right side of the road. One of the girls succumbed to her injuries at the scene, while the other passed away at Akron Children's Hospital. The boy survived after suffering broken bones and severe injuries to his head. Police officers launched an investigation through which they discovered Boggs had been texting when she crashed into the trio. At first, the woman had reportedly gotten out of the car to help the victims but then went back and started deleting the text messages off her cell phone. A forensic report indicated she had been receiving and sending texts immediately prior to the first emergency call. She was arrested and indicted on charges of involuntary manslaughter, aggravated vehicular homicide and tampering with evidence. Boggs initially denied she'd been texting and driving, telling officers she'd been distracted by her son who was sitting in the back seat. In 2018, however, she pleaded guilty to all charges and was sentenced to six years in prison. Number 1. Marcus Nathan At around 3.30 a.m. on April the 20th of 2022, Dennis Kirby Kendrick was sitting inside his vehicle, parked near the Abbey Ridge apartment homes in the Oxford Township of Oakland County, Michigan, when he was approached by a man. Marcus Anthony Nathan, aged 36, got close to 54-year-old Kendrick's car and confronted him about a threatening text he'd received. Nathan became convinced Kendrick was the sender after he'd been walking around the complex earlier that night trying to figure out who'd been behind the threatening text. He didn't believe Kendrick when he denied having had anything to do with it, brandished a 9mm handgun and shot the man multiple times, killing him. Nathan then called 911 and reported the murder, admitting he was the perpetrator. It was later discovered that Kendrick had been wrongfully accused by the shooter. The authorities determined the two men lived in the same apartment complex, but had no connection with each other. Nathan was charged with open murder and possession of a firearm in the commission of a felony. Thanks for watching. Would you rather always have to text with your non-dominant hand or Trade your smartphone for a Nokia 3310. Let us know in the comments section below.